Welcome to the Motoring Podcast. This is episode 99 on Tuesday, the 4th of April, 2017. Hello, I'm Alan. And I'm all alone this week. Yes, Andrew is away doing important, super top secret stuff that I, if I tell you about it, uh, I'll get shot. Or something like that, anyway. But anyway, he's not available uh, to be with us tonight. So just quickly, what's going to be on the show? Um, Uber versus Waymo, a bit more on that coming up. Uh, Maddox Yellow is now a thing. Tesla is now worth more than Ford and or GM. Uh, and there's going to be a daily toxin tax, uh, according to our government, which is a fantastic thing to look forward to. Anyway, let's head straight in to the follow-up. There's uh, a whopping two pieces this week. Uh, so first up is the aforementioned Uber versus Waymo. We talked about this before. Uh, this is where uh, ride-sharing uh, company uh, Uber uh, may is, well has been taken to court by Waymo, the self-driving car part of Uber. Alphabet, which used to be Google, it's all very complicated, uh, uh, over uh, the four, over Uber's, Uber's program director, a chap called Anthony Lewandowski, uh, who left, who went basically straight from Google uh, to Uber. Uh, and there are about 11,000 uh, missing files from Google's servers, uh, which is all a little bit suspicious. Uh, the judge in this case that was brought by by Google, by Waymo, uh, would like Anthony Lewandowski to testify. He is pleading the fifth, uh, as in the Fifth Amendment, uh, so as not to self-implicate, because if he does, it seems there is a fear uh, from his lawyer that uh, the, he could then be holed up on criminal charges, and he doesn't want to do that. Uh, if you want to read up more on that, then we've got links in the show notes to uh, stories from uh, Jalopnik and Bloomberg, uh, if you want to be an expert in US law. I have absolutely no desire, and over the last 18 months, I've found I know far more about German contract law than is strictly healthy. Uh, next piece of follow-up is, I guess, ultimately good news. Um, there was a car rally at the weekend when 100 yellow cars descended on the village of Bybury near Sirencester in the Cotswolds. Uh, and this was to show uh, solidarity, support for uh, the retired 84-year-old dentist Peter Maddox, uh, who had his yellow Vauxhall Corsa parked outside his own house um, in the village, uh, vandalized by people saying it was ugly uh, because it got in the way of tourists taking pretty pictures of pretty um, the pretty Cotswold village of of Bybury. Anyway, this was was widely condemned by just about anyone uh, with a pulse, uh, including ourselves. Uh, and um, yeah, a chat from Coventry uh, organized this rally of a hundred cars. Uh, the more people wanted to join, uh, but they did limit it to 100 uh, for obvious and clear reasons. Um, and that took place at the weekend and was a great success, covered by pretty much all the news outlets. So I'm, I'm pretty much certain that you knew all about that. Uh, there'll be a link to the BBC story in the show notes. One last thing, and this is the thing that really cheered me up and I really thought was absolutely fantastic, is that Vauxhall uh, showed their support as well. And what they've done is the, they've renamed uh, the color corresponding to to, co to code 40Q, which used to be called Melon Yellow, uh, to Maddox Yellow uh, in support. So I think that that, I really, really hope uh, that that, that is, is followed right the way through, because I think that's a that's a fantastic thing for a manufacturer to do. Dead easy. Um, but but yeah, really shows that they, they actually care about that kind of stuff. Anyway, uh, happily into a new news. Uh, news: the first, uh, the first new uh, car factory, uh, essentially in the UK, has been built after about ten years. Well, it's the first new car factory in ten years to be built in the UK, and it's been built in Warwickshire by the London Taxi Company. Um, you'll never guess what they build. Could be taxis, possibly. 
Um, as I said, they're owned by uh, Chinese manufacturer Geely. If you wonder why we sometimes mention Geely, it's because they also own Volvo, uh, as well as having a number of partnerships with many European uh, car manufacturers uh, who build and sell in China. Uh, they have invested 300 million pounds in this new plant near Annecy, um, near, near Coventry. Uh, and they're hoping that that's going to mean that they can build up to about 20,000 uh, vehicles there a year uh, and, uh, uh, and, and bring about 1,000 jobs uh, to, to the factory as well. Going to be building a new taxi model. Uh, this is good from my point of view, if, especially if, if you've listened to me uh, rant and rave about the particular from London taxis. Uh, and that's because from the 1st of January 2018, uh, all new London taxis registered or sold. Well, it's not a London taxi unless it's been registered. All new London taxis registered uh, will have to have at least 30 miles of zero emission running. To do that, uh, London Taxi Company have uh, come up with a, a new model. And that new model um, has a new lightweight body structure, which means that London Taxi Company are going to become uh, Geely's lightweight uh, lightweight body structure expert uh, globally. So they'll share their knowledge and their and their learning from this with uh, with Volvo, with other companies uh, within within Geely, other brands within Geely. The drivetrain is going to be uh, derived from a new uh, Volvo range extender hybrid uh, using a one and a half litre three cylinder petrol engine, I believe, uh, which will actually be built in China and then installed into the into the taxis, um, into the taxis in the Warwickshire plant. Uh, these new taxis, by the way, um, New taxis will have, as I say, at least that 30 mile uh, EV range. The idea is they're probably going to need one charge a day uh, to cover that whole 150 to 200 miles that uh, that London taxis do each day. So this is a good thing uh, on a number of levels uh, from the economic uh, point of view, from uh, economic point of view. Uh, from the factory and, and from building that and from our engineering skills here in the UK, but also very much in the centre of London. That's 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 one more pretty awful source of particulates, uh, which hopefully will be lessened. I don't know the time scale for phasing out the, the diesel, uh, the diesel engines in there, in the existing, uh, in the existing models. Uh, next up, is that as of today, uh, Tesla is more valuable than Ford and or General Motors, depending on who you read. Uh, uh, Tesla, Tesla shares rose by 7% uh, when they recorded their, their quarterly, well, when they reported their quarterly figures uh, earlier on today. Uh, they have delivered 25,000 cars in the first quarter of, uh, of 2017, which is up 70% on the equivalent last year. Um, just in case you're wondering, at the close of trading, uh, Tesla was worth $49 billion off the back of that. I'll let you work out how much that is per car. Uh, and Ford is worth $46 billion. Uh, I'm not sure about the numbers for GM right at the moment. Um, this is this is paper valuation, really. Uh, and this is down to down to those those terrible things called analysts. Uh, none of us really quite understand what it is they do. Uh, and what it is that, 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 that they're basing some of these numbers on. Um, and of course, this is that in turn affects the share prices, as I say, 7% rise today. Um, it doesn't really, um, you know, and, and it's based on growth. I mean, that's 70% growth uh, in a quarter is really, really impressive. Uh, but I'll be very interested to see just how that continues over the rest of the year. I imagine that in three months' time, uh, many of us and many of the uh, uh, and many of the reporters uh, will will have kind of forgotten about today, 
uh, and we'll see how it goes. Um, other things to look out for are remember the delays on the Model Three. That's meant to hit. Uh, that's meant to hit production in July. As yet, there has been one. It wasn't called a prototype. I think they called it a pre-release. Uh, um, a prototype. Oh, God, might as well use the proper words. Uh, prototype are running around uh, on the road, so it'll be interesting to see uh, just how that goes. Uh, let's hope the fit and finish is better than that on every single Tesla Model X door that I see photographed, uh, because they're always off. They're always wonky. I'm sorry. Um, I'm going to need quite a lot of persuading that that Teslas are worth that that type of the type of money that's being charged uh, for the quality of what's being built. I'm sorry, I've just turned that into a Tesla rant, and I really didn't mean to, um, but sometimes it just happens because I, I don't have Andrew looking at me in a disapproving fashion uh, this week. Um, come if I said last year Tesla shipped 76,000 cars globally. Ford, worth uh, $3 billion less on paper, shipped $6.7 million. I kind of know where I'd put my money um, if if I was, was someone who invested in stocks and shares. Uh, meanwhile, we come to that point in the show, and you'll notice that it is really very much quicker than normal this week, uh, just because there is only me. Um, to ask you, uh, well, to remind you, first of all, about our Audible offer. Uh, Audible is the audiobook service from Amazon, and Amazon is offering you a 30-day free trial of their One Book Monthly Membership. During the trial, you'll receive a one free monthly credit to be applied to any of the over 200,000 titles in their store and receive all the benefits of being a member within those 30 days. You may cancel at any time during the trial period. And if you do cancel, the audiobook remains yours to keep. When the 30-day trial period ends, Memberships will automatically renew at Audible's full rate of £7.99 a month, a huge saving over the purchasing of even a single audiobook. To try Aud Audible for yourself, go to motoringpodcast.com slash support and click on the Audible graphic to subscribe via Amazon. This week, I haven't read any new Audible books. Uh, oh, read, listen to any new Audible books, um, I've actually finished off Street Smart, uh, The Rise of Cities and the Falls of Cars by Samuel and I. Schwartz that I talked about last week, um, which really was interesting, by the way. Great chapter towards the end, uh, all about his views on autonomous vehicles uh, and self-driving vehicles and how they may not be uh, the solution to, to reduce urban congestion. Um, he bases uh, his opinions on that on a number of things, uh, not least of which is a is a career of 30 plus years uh, uh, in traffic management. Uh, and he was he was the traffic commissioner for New York City for quite a while. He has his own um, he has his own his own. Um, his own consultancy now, Sam Schwartz Engineering, uh, helping other people. Uh, try to reduce the impact of cars uh, on their roads. What else do I have queued up? What else have I been uh, listening to? Well, here on um, what's waiting? Ah, one of the ones I enjoy dipping in and out of because it's not just audio books uh, that are available via Amazon. There's also um, there's also uh, lots and lots of, of radio series from the BBC from other suppliers uh, as well and one of the ones that I enjoy popping in and out of is Yes Minister and Yes Prime Minister uh, by Anthony Jay and Jonathan Lynn uh, it's amazing uh, when you can't see their out-of-date telephones it's amazing just uh, just how pertinent uh, that still is and it's great uh, I don't know about you I used to have these on cassette okay I used to have these on cassette audiobooks I think I still do um, and to be able to listen to them again without having to lug rattly cassettes around and find that I can't use them in any of my cars um, is is quite a luxury. So uh, so yeah, I can absolutely recommend a Yes Minister and Yes Prime Minister um, 
from the BBC. Um, and again, instead of paying, I think these are about twenty pounds for that set, uh, which is which is one of your monthly credits at seven ninety nine. So please, please, please uh, do give that a try. If not, if you've already got an Am an Audible subscription, then uh, uh, or just want to buy that particular audio book, uh, I'll make sure that the link to that is in the show notes. It's worth doing it in the show notes, by the way, because. It's a link that means we get something back. I'm sure you've sussed that one by now. Uh, as I said, uh, to try Audible for yourself, go to motoringpodcast.com slash support and click on the Audible graphic to subscribe via Amazon. Uh, if you're interested in promoting your product or service via the Motoring Podcast, then please do get in touch. Contact details, as ever, will be at the end of the show. Just because I have pestered you about Audible, of course, doesn't mean that I'm not going to ask you to take a few moments to tell a friend about Motoring Podcast and Rear View, and to leave a star rating and review for us via the podcast playing platform of your choice. The most popular and powerful podcasting platform of all is iTunes, so a five-star rating on there is hugely influential. But on other stat on other podcast apps such as Stitcher, Pocket Cast, Downcast, Overcast, and the like, a rating still means a lot. So thanks in anticipation. Okay, moving on from that. Uh, as we warned you last week, uh, the weekend just passed uh, was a Formula was a Formula E E Pre weekend. Um, last weekend was in Mexico, and uh, I confess here and now, which is why this is going to be short and sweet, um, that. Uh, I didn't actually get a chance to see it. I'm sorry. I had this this terrible thing called trying to be sociable. I don't do it very often, but I, I was actually doing it on uh, on Saturday. Um, I watched the um, summary on YouTube, and frankly, it was such a nuts race that the, the highlights didn't really make much sense. Completely honest. Didn't really make a huge amount of sense, uh, and most of that was because just so much was going on. Uh, most notable of all, of course, is that Luca Degrassi of the Abd Adi Sport Abd team uh, went from last to first on the grid, and that was despite having to stop on his third lap uh, for a replacement, uh, a replacement rear wing uh, after it got knocked off um, in the first couple of corners. Looked absolutely crazy. Um, it was just really good racing and, and, and sort of more, uh, I was going to say more overtakes in a Formula One season. That's not quite true, but it certainly feels that way uh, whenever you're watching uh, watching Formula E. So as ever, I really, really, really um, have to, to, to recommend it as, as a, 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 a quality motorsport. Uh, some people complain that... Um, the, the noise isn't to their liking. I think we're all going to have to get a bit used to that uh, in this day and age. It's it's just what's happening. Um, anyhow, the final uh, positions on there were third for Virgin Racing with Sam Bird. So congratulations to him. Uh, second was Jean Eric Vern uh, from the Tachita team. First, of course, was Lucas Degrassi from the Audi Sport App team, as I've said. It's worth mentioning that Jaguar got their first points finish as well. Uh, Mitch Evans was fourth for them. So uh, that's always good news. It's always nice to have. It's always nice to have. Um, it's always nice to have a British team doing well. But given so much of Formula E's British, it's uh, it's... It's it's yeah. It's once again a fine sign of British engineering, and I will stop being quite such a blowhard on that all the time. At some point, um, one last note on Formula E. Formula E. It turns out that, uh, and this is very much according to to Black Flag and Jalopnik. Um, it turns out that uh, our favorite CEO, Sergio Marchioni, uh, made headlines this week after declaring that Ferrari needs to get into Formula E. Um, uh, he said, 
as quoted by Autosport, we need to be involved in Formula E because electrification via hybridization is going to be part of our future. Hybridization is crucial to Ferrari. There's no denying that regulations puts under pressure and we could reach those targets in other ways. Goes on and on and on because it's Sergio. Um, and um, yeah, when uh, uh, when Jalopnik got a chance to to speak to to uh, Alejandro Agag, the the sort of head on show, really the man who's 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 uh, who's behind the vision of Formula E. Um, what how 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 any discussions were getting on uh, with Formula E? His response was, "I don't know. They said it yesterday, right? They haven't told me." Uh, and he pointed out that it wasn't the first time that uh, Mr. Marchione has made those kind of report, kind of remarks. He'd be delighted to have Ferrari, um, but um, but yeah, maybe someone should some people some people's people should get in touch with other people's people and uh, see what happens. Uh, of course, it's worth. I was thinking about this a little bit, and I'm amazed that the FCA really uh, FCA and General Motors are really two of the the larger um, automotive groups, which don't have, uh, which don't have uh, uh, a representation uh, in Formula E. If you think uh, Volkswagen does via uh, Volkswagen does via Audi, the Audi Sport Ab team, um, the Renault, Nissan, Mitsubishi, Rebel Alliance do via Renault uh, and the Edams team. Uh, BMW doesn't yet, but is going to. Mercedes doesn't yet, but is going to, and is is planned and committed from 2018 to 2021, as we talked about last week. Um, I think. Oh, I I lie slightly actually because Ford doesn't doesn't either. Hmm. Okay, I might have to revise my opinion on that one uh, now that I think about it. Uh, in a little bit more than I did whenever I was putting the notes together. So, uh, so yeah, there's still a couple who are outstanding, but the majority of the the, the large, the 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 large automakers are very much into Formula E. I'm going to stop shoveling now, and move on very very quickly. Um, uh, yeah, uh, last proper news story of this week. Is that today again? Um, it was, uh, and I've got this uh, from the uh, from Autocar, uh, which in turn was via the Times, and I couldn't delve into the Times, uh, the Times report, because um, because it's behind a paywall, and I could only see a very few words at the beginning, very few words at the end, uh, and. I'm not very good at wanting to give money to 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 certain news organisations, uh, especially right at the moment. Um, however, supposedly going to be announced this week is a new government initiative. <laughs> hey, that's always a good start uh, here in the UK, uh, which will charge twenty pounds per day to uh, diesel drivers entering into England's. 10 most polluted cities and 35 points around the place. So if you want to go to cities including Birmingham, Derby, Leeds, London, Nottingham and Southampton, you may be charged £10 for the privilege if you have a diesel vehicle, an older diesel vehicle. It did point out in smaller letters uh, deep in the story that newer vehicles may well be excluded uh, from this as i say it's meant to be announced this week we'll see what kind of enormous cluster uh, that turns out to be um, because quite frankly most of those cities i'm not really certain i would desperately want to go to uh, anyway so so it sounds like a fantastic way of putting many people off visiting uh, many of the uk's towns and cities um again it all feels very much like jumping on the bandwagon uh, I don't understand how they're going to go about putting in the infrastructure to do this. I don't understand how much that's going to cost. Uh, and I have a funny feeling that neither do they. Uh, so we'll, we'll see uh, just, just what happens. Um, I can't imagine it can be any slicker than the way that the 1st of April um, VD tax changes uh, were implemented. 
to be perfectly honest. But uh, but let's let's see what happens. It could be that nothing's announced. It could be that something's announced, but it fritters away, like many many of these of these types of scheme. So uh, yes, we shall see what happens. Uh, lastly, uh, this week, uh, of course, it is now the 4th of April, which means that we have managed to pass April Fool's Day uh, without too many uh, nasty things happening to us. By nasty things, I mean, uh, m I mean motor manufacturing distributors, April Fool's uh, jokes. Um, I read quite a lot of them this year, so I thought it was worth just picking out my favorite five um there were a lot um and i'm just going to very quickly skim over these uh i might as well actually make that favorite six because i really like the mclaren one uh mclaren went to a lot of effort with their carbon fiber feather covered um their, their new sort of uh, feather covering uh for uh, advanced uh advanced aerodynamics based on uh, mimicking nature uh, on their range of cars. So, uh, yeah, that was a cracker. Uh, others that I really, really liked were the uh, were Toyota uh, UK, um, who were pointing out that, 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 that for a, a very limited period, uh, specifically April the 1st, the, um, the Mirai would be available to, would have a, a, an extra setting, which would mean that whilst it only, um, it only emits uh, water um, um, when the fuel cell is being used. That it would you would be able to choose whether it was still or sparkling water, uh, which I thought was particularly good. Uh, BMW had the i3 Chameleon Edition, uh, which is a BMW i3 which changed color depending on the state of its charge. That was a that was a nice one. Um, Drone delivery is uh, an ever popular one uh, when it comes to April Fools right at the minute. Uh, my favorite was the fact that Hyundai had expanded their click to buy uh, service uh, with click to fly. So you could order your car uh, over the over the internet and um, and Hyundai would deliver it within two hours uh, by by drone. Uh, but and it wasn't even drone. They actually went a little bit more thought into that and it was fuel cell powered drone. Of course, to to link in with with uh, Hyundai's work in that field, um, Piston Heads are going to be using their part of the fifty million pound investment from uh, Haymarket into Autocar, Wattcar, and, and Piston Heads, uh, as discussed uh, relatively previously, um, to build themselves a new driving resort, uh, which they reckoned would be just the thing for Piston Heads members. And last but not least, a bad obsession on motorsports, who you've heard me talk about uh, their work on Project Bin Binky, taking an, is an ST183 um, Toyota, uh, Toyota Celica GT4 uh, engine and drivetrain and squeezing that uh, under uh, an original Isagonis Mini uh, and fantastic series that's going on there. Uh, they showed us uh, how, to, how to weld a mug back together as well, which is absolutely cracking. Um, oh, every pun not intended. Sorry about that, folks. Um, so yeah, they were, they were, they were my favorites just there. And that pretty much uh, brings it to the end tonight. That's relatively, oh, that's half an hour. That's going to be, uh, so that's relatively short and relatively nippy, uh, I'm afraid. However, don't forget that between now and our normal show again uh, next week, you can give us any feedback and share your thoughts with the show at Motoring Podcast on Twitter and Instagram, on Facebook, and on the contact page of motoringpodcast.com, the hub of all our activities. Please don't forget our Audible offer, available at motoringpodcast.com slash support. And please, please leave a review and rating on iTunes or however your podcast app lets you do such a thing. As I say every single week, it really does matter. Uh, to get in touch with Andrew, uh, search for Cracked Windscreen uh, on Twitter. Um, to get in touch with me, it's best to use Twitter where I'm at AJP Bradley, B R A D L E Y. Uh, we'll both be back next week. But until then, I've been Alan Bradley, and safe motoring.